Hello, welcome. My name is Jim Logan, and I serve as the clarinet professor at the University of Texas at El Paso, UTEP. And today, we're going to look at the second half of the 2024 Allstate Etudes, the second half of number two uh, of the second etude, which is page 66, number 21. When we last talked about this etude, I talked, uh, I ended it right there uh, at the cadenza, where the cadenza starts in measure 15. And this section uh, has a lot of very small notes. Um, it has some direction given as to what we're to do, but here it, the, the whole thing is to be very free. Uh, so before we get into all of the other, the, the, the notes here and, and the fingerings and all of that, I wanna talk about the first two notes at measure 15, your, your E's. So we have this E and then we have your I, high E. Again, for all notes above C sharp, you've gotta make sure you have that E flat, E flat key and you get in front of a tuner and make sure that that note is uh, is in tune. Uh, both notes are in tune with each other. Okay. Um, there is a, if you're high E, generally it's gonna be a little on the high side if it's not a little on the sharp side and you need to bring up the pitch a little bit, you can do so by using your fork key here. Not the fork key here, because if I have my, my finger on this key and I'm lowering these keys that negates the good, we have to come back against the rail and, and that's how we get that high uh, E a little on the sharper side. Again, should be fine with your regular E fingering, but if, it, if you need it, um, you've got that as a resource, okay? All right, so... Um, I'm going to go through these notes just slowly and then we'll talk about how we're going to play them. Make sure we have a G sharp there uh, in that first grouping. Uh, and the, uh, the B uh, that you have in that second grouping should be B on the right. Should be B on the right. Um, and there's a C sharp in there, so you've got to get the right notes. And then the next section, it says meno moso, which means less motion, which means a little slower. So we have. And a crescendo down to forte, okay? And then uh, a good old chromatic scale, okay? Why do we work on scales? There's the reason. Okay, music is made up of scales and we see these scales all the time. If you know your, your chromatic scale, okay, if you don't, well, it's one more thing to work on, but you need to learn a chromatic scale. Um, okay, so generally the rule is, the rule of thumb when you have all of these 16ths and 30 seconds uh, that we start a little on the slow side, we go a little faster, and then we go a little slower like this. That's pretty much what you're going to do there. The main omoso, we don't go faster at the end if it says main omoso, okay? Um, again, it's kind of up to you how slow and fast you want to go here. Uh, we shouldn't have to take, you know, three breaths there between 15 and the low E. So kind of keep that together. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard for students when they see 16th notes to go really slow because it's the, the panic mode kind of sticks in. And so what I will do with students is I will have them write quarter notes above those first notes to, so they know they have permission to go very slow. For example, okay, write it in. You'll maybe feel more comfortable with starting slow, but, but we shouldn't hear That would be a mistake. That would be wrong, okay? Now for the chromatic scale, again, think quarter notes on those first few notes. Etc., 
except I didn't get to the C sharp. One more time. <laughs> Okay, if you want to get slower at the end, you could do that. If you want to push, uh, it does say presante, which means move. So if you want to go, you know, straight shot in, you could do that as well. But I don't think anybody's gonna gonna dock you because you slow down on the last couple of notes which reminds me of one of my favorite phrases, uh, finding a musical solution to a technical difficulty, okay? If you don't remember anything else in this video, remember that. Look for a musical solution to a technical difficulty. The technical difficulty is, it can be a little tricky to go without slowing down a little bit. So we can call it musical and, and, and put a tenuto over those last couple of notes. Okay, it's easier technically and it's more musical. So win, win. Uh, going on, anything else here? Um, measure 18, uh, peccato, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, means placidly, means pretty, pretty, pretty straight. Nothing uh, big pushing and big crescendo, decrescendo, just pretty flat. Uh, let's talk about this turn going into measure 20. Okay, so that turn, the pickups should be A to B to A to G sharp. It's the G, so, so it's A to B to A to G sharp to F sharp. to B to A to G sharp to A to B and then the F sharp to G sharp and you should use your trill fingering when we trill from A to B that's the trill key those are the notes This is where hand position will make or break you. If every time you go up here, you have to bring everything up here and scratch the paint off the ceilings, you're gonna have a hard time getting back to beat the last beat there at measure 19. Keep the fingers close. Keep the fingers close. Hand position. If not, right? My finger can move independently of the other fingers. That's the beauty of a hand. All right? Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yes, I think so. Thank you for agreeing with me. Measure 20, we have a B that must be on the right side, followed by C sharp because we have a friendly, not so friendly D sharp there on beat three. Okay. So in measure 21, beat three, C sharp on the left, B on the right, B sharp, same as C on the left, D sharp, C sharp on the left. Right, L, R, L, R, it will make your life much easier, trust me. And then we have some friendly, not so friendly trills. Okay, now that can be overwhelming throwing that all together. So simplify, simplify, simplify. Just play the, the measure without any ornamentation, like this. Okay, once you feel pretty comfortable with that, then add the grace notes. Yeah, and I, I did add the grace notes, but make sure that that B on beat three, we're talking 24, 23, measure 22, that B on beat three should be on the right side. That C sharp, the second note of beat four, should be on the right side. Folks, you gotta trust me on this one. You gotta trust me on this one. You've gotta learn those right hand fingerings, please. Again. Okay. 
Okay, then we add the trills. It's E to F sharp, E to F sharp, E to F sharp. What's the rule with trill fingerings or, or, or where we go to next? It's the next note in that scale in the key that we're in. We're in the key of A major. And after E in the A major scale is, guess what? F sharp. Okay, last time here and we're gonna move on. Okay, now we've graduated to measure 23. The last note of beat three, that B is gonna have to be on the right side because we have a C sharp coming up, we have a D sharp coming up, so you mark that in your part. Okay, and then in measure 24, we have a grace note F double sharp, which is the same as G natural followed by a G sharp grace note into beat four. And, the, and then uh, the second to the last note of measure 24, that G sharp accidental carries through. So I'm gonna play this once, uh, starting with the pickups into 24. There you go. The trill, G sharp two, what comes after G sharp in the A major scale? A. What comes after A in the A major scale? B. Um, yeah. So that's it. Again, simplify, simplify, simplify. Don't try to get all the trills and all the grace notes right out of the gate. Just play measure 24. Please trust me, please trust me. 24, play it uh, with the pickups without the ornamentation, without the trills, without the grace notes. Okay, and you feel pretty comfortable with that? Then add the grace notes. And you hear how tight the, the grace note is to the, the following downbeat? Okay, I hear all kinds of crazy things about, uh, you know, I hear. Uh, that's wrong. Okay, grace notes should need to be very close to the, to the, uh, very close to the, to the following downbeat. Then we add the tropes. Once again, this is where hand position comes in. If you're if you're trilling like this, well, guess what? You're going to be in big trouble get, getting uh, to the, the the E and B two of uh, of twenty four. It's not going to happen. Fingers close. Okay. There's no cheat here, folks. There's no. There's none that sound good. So both fingers. Good luck with that. Now the key here is to try don't don't try and make it a, a buzz saw trill. Don't make you don't have to worry about it being really 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 fast. Just practice that trill, okay? But those move fingers move and 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 yeah. Good luck with it. It's gonna take practice. It's gonna take time. All right, and then uh, measure twenty five. Um, we have a B sharp, same as C, D sharp. Again, make sure you're using your E flat A flat key and do not leave the E flat A flat key down to the C sharp that follows. Do not do that. It's too sharp. <laughs> Correct note. <laughs> Wrong note. <laughs> Wrong fingering. <laughs> right fingering. Okay. Yeah. So guess what? It's hard to come from D sharp to C sharp. That's a, that's why we practice. Twenty five. Okay, that last note, that last C sharp in measure 25, on the right side. It's, 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 just, it's just wrong, folks. Learn to play the C sharp on the right side. All right, I think I've beaten that dead horse beyond recognition as to what it is at this point. Uh, 30, measure 30. Measure 30. We have yet another turn, okay? And there's a sharp under that turn. Hmm, what does that mean? That means... That means that what would usually be a B 
is going to be a B sharp, same as C natural. So the turn is C sharp, D, C sharp, and the C sharp should be on the right side. C sharp, D, C sharp, B sharp on the left, back to C sharp on the right, and then up to F sharp, you're welcome. Okay, what else? It's pretty much it, Pew Lento. Two from the end, we have a Pew Lento, what does that mean? That means slower. So this is measure uh, 34, 33. Resonance fingerings, now you need to learn them. Resonance fingers and the throat tones generally, especially when we're soft, are going to be very, very sharp. So, again, musical solution to a technical difficulty. We get to keep the right hand down, folks. When we go from B to A, we're going to keep everything down and keep the pitch down. That uh, I'll bet 85% of the people that play that note in auditions will be extremely sharp. Unless the ones that have no to keep the whole right hand down. It makes it easier. How about that? And um, yeah, what else? That is a, that hold that you see in measure 34 is over an eighth note, not over a whole note. So it would be wrong to play. No, it's too long for something that's marked over eighth note, okay? So take a little bit of time, but don't go too crazy on that, all right? Really nice crescendo there to the end, okay? All right, questions, email me. Happy to help, keep practicing, and stay tuned, because I've got more videos coming. Good luck.